Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Florida Everblades pregame show from Hertz Arena alongside Jake Maurice. I'm Ali Vellucci. Today, we are talking a new rival in the building. Kansas City Mavericks are here for the first time this season. Some roster shakeups by the Everblades and how Florida can get back in the WCOM. Jake, three home games in a row for Florida this week. How exactly are they going to be able to find their footing early on this weekend? Well, I think you have to get a really good start tonight. This is the game where you're supposed to set the tone. We saw last week the Everblades did a good job of that when they were in Allen against the Americans, got an 8-5 win. They couldn't continue it, unfortunately, into the next two games. But you always just have to start with that first one and set the tone right, especially in front of your home fans. This is the first time that Kansas City has been here since 2019. It's been quite a while since we've seen the Mavericks. They're a good team this year, sitting at a playoff spot in the Mountain Division. So they're going to come out hard after a tough weekend for themselves. So you can expect that the Everblades are going to need to bring their best tonight to start things off for this three-game home set. Two-game losing streak for Florida, something that they're not used to seeing, this, especially this season. What part of Florida's game is going to need to be exceptional the next three games? Yeah, it feels weird. I mean, this is the first time the Everblades have lost back-to-back -back games in regulation all year. We're not used to talking about this kind of Very stuff. Very weird. So when you look at the two games that Florida lost against Allen last week, special teams were a big factor, especially the penalty kill. And then also the Everblades just could never find that tying goal. They had chances in the game on Friday and Saturday to try and lock the game back up. They just couldn't bear down and get that goal. So just finishing your chances, because the Everblades, they had their opportunities. Joe Pendenza especially, who had a great week for the Everblades, got himself his 100th ECHL goal last Saturday. He had a lot of opportunities. It's just a matter of burying them. Sometimes you just don't here against Kansas City at home with the support of the fans. You should be a little bit easier to do that. The news everybody wants to talk about. Forward John McCarron, the Mac is back. All-time Everblades point producer last season. He's not only a leader on the ice, but off the ice as well, captain last year too. What is his presence going to bring not only to the locker room, but to the stands and to this organization overall? Yeah, to the locker room, it's a gigantic emotional boost that starts day one, even if he's not gonna be out on the ice, like he's probably not gonna be for these next few games just knowing he's coming back him being around the team training is going to be a huge boost especially for the veteran guys guys who already know McCarron and could make that quick connection with him and help introduce him to the new guys on the ice I'm expecting that after a couple weeks he's gonna, it might take him a little bit to get up to full game speed but I mean this is the guy who leads the Everblades in all-time points right there's lots of talent there he was a huge factor for their Kelly Cup run last season so I'm expecting that once he kind of gets his legs under him gets up to game speed and gets himself back into the flow of playing intense hockey, pushing for a playoff spot, that John McCarron is going to be a pretty solid contributor to the lineup. We're not going to see McCarron on the ice for a couple weeks, but systematically, how are we going to see Florida maybe change a little bit adjustment-wise to bring in a point producer like him? Well, we're going to, it's going to mostly take place over practice, obviously, over the next couple weeks. So hopefully when the Everblades are back home in early March against the South Carolina Stingrays, that's when we'll see him. Maybe we'll see a few tweaks here and there. You want to see maybe some different line combinations as head coach Brad Ralph prepares to get McCarron back into the lineup. Does he want to put McCarron with some guys he's used to playing with, guys like Pendenza up front, Nuber, maybe other veterans, or does he want to put him with some rookies with lots of talent like Oliver Chow and Xavier Cormier? On the back end, I can't imagine too much is going to change defensively. System-wise, system, system -wise, I'd imagine that this is pretty much a similar system to McCar that McCarron is used to. It's not like he's coming into a new team. He knows how the Everblades like to play hockey. He knows a lot of the idiosyncrasies of this team systems and of the guys who play in that system. So that makes it is going to make it easier for McCarron to adjust back into the Everblades lineup. I don't expect we'll see huge sweeping changes. I think just the biggest change will be having him out there contributing on the ice. Some new faces on the Everblades roster. They brought in forward Carson Folk and defenseman Xavier Poulier folks bringing in a lot of speed along with all that skill. Pouliot bringing in that toughness. How exactly are they going to elevate Florida's offense and on the blue line? Yeah, on the blue line, Xavier Pouliot, it's a little easier. He just brings in a whole lot of size. Rookie player might take him a little bit of time to get acclimated to professional hockey, but yeah, he's just going to bring a lot of toughness to the back end, especially a good sense. he will be replacing Josh Victor, the team traded to the Railers earlier last week. For folk, he brings just so much skill. It took a lot to bring him in from Kalamazoo. They had to send two regulars, James McEwen and Nick Lappin, out to Michigan to bring folk in, but he's a Vancouver Canucks prospect, very highly thought of by that organization, and he just brings an element to the Everblades that those other two guys didn't bring, just an element of game-changing ability, that dynamism that other players simply don't have in this league, so I'm excited to see what Carson Folk can do. Everybody's favorite part of the pregame show, calling out our number one star of the night. I've been trashed the past like two weeks. Jake, how have you been doing? 
little bit better. <laughs> okay. uh, not much. <laughs> okay. We're going we're gonna to redeem ourselves this week. Yeah. New I'm, week. New week. New week. New week. We're going to do good. I'm going to go maybe a safe option again. Carson Folks. I'm going to take him. I think he's going to come in, try to prove himself pretty early on here and, and get things going. Jake? Yeah, you kind of stole my <laughs> eye a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go with Joe Pendenza. He's just coming off a really okay. great week. He was, for my money, the best ever blade in that trip out to Allen. Hit his 100th ECHL goal, as I mentioned. I want to see him keep going on a seven-game point streak right now. Let's see him stretch that up to eight. Three games in a row against a team we haven't seen so far this season. Three keys to the game. What do you got? Well, the biggest key has already happened, and that's preparation. Head yep. coach Brad Ralphie talked about it last week with Allen. When you're going up against a team that you haven't seen for a long time, you have to lean heavily on your video work. Video coach Evan Jones, I know, is putting a lot of hard work getting ready for this series, so I'm expecting that to show up tonight. Also, you want to come out with a really fast start. You're back home. You've got some exciting news with John McCarron to galvanize your group. I want to see this group come out strong to start things off and finally improve on the penalty kill. It was a rough week for the penalty kill in Allen. Part of that was just due to how good Allen's power play was. They have the top three scorers in the league all on that first unit. That's yep. very tough to stop. They're not going to have quite the same level of challenge with the Mavericks, but Mavericks still have a pretty good power play unit. I want to see the Everblades do better when they're down a man tonight. All right, Everblades fans, here we go. Some Wednesday night hockey for you. Warm-ups and puck drop are up next.